What do laser deposition welding, digital payment, and a big old beanbag have in common? They're all on today's episode. I'm John P. Welcome to Geek Beat. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Lynda.com. What happens when a laser and a milling machine have a baby? You get the new LaserTech 65 3D printer? Actually, it's a laser deposition welding and machining machine. The new LaserTech 65 basically has a laser torch with a channel around the tip that allows the machine to basically blow metal dust out while the laser's on. When the metal hits the other metal, it melts and bonds instantly. Now, imagine moving that around with a precision CNC and well, you get the picture. A 3D printed metal object. The problem is that object is going to be rough. So to smooth things out, the LaserTech 65 incorporates a built-in milling machine that allows it to go right back over whatever it just made and polish it off nice and fine. So if anyone's looking for ideas for my birthday, this is what I want. And in digital payment news, perhaps you'll be able to buy me that laser deposition welder with your smartphone. No, I don't think you'll be able to just trade it in, but if Google has their way, the rumor is that very soon Google Wallet will be integrated into the Android OS, as well as with all of the US mobile carriers to allow Apple Pay-like convenience for Android users. I know I just told you about Samsung's purchase of Loop Pay last week, but maybe that's why Google's coming forward with this info. There would clearly be an advantage in owning the mobile payment space, and perhaps they're trying to cut Samsung off at the knees before they get a stronghold. Personally, I'm just glad to see some options coming to Android, and frankly, it's better to have multiple options anyway. With Apple, it looks like users will be stuck with one monopolistic system. If you're a fan of the Pebble, get ready to break out your wallet, digital or otherwise, because the company is back with a new crowdfunding project on Kickstarter. Yesterday, they launched the Pebble Time, which will incorporate a color e-ink display, a microphone so you can talk to your watch Dick Tracy style, and seven days of battery life. Oh, plus it's waterproof. The new Pebble will work with all 6,500 of the apps already out there, and they say it'll be ready to ship in May? They were asking $159 for the first 10,000 people for the early bird pricing, which sounds like a lot of people could get it, except within the first few hours, they moved all 10,000 of them, and as of a few minutes ago, they booked nearly four and a half million dollars worth of orders for over 21,000 pebbles. And even as I write this episode or wrote this episode, you can just watch the orders streaming in by the thousands, which goes to prove that pebble owners love their watch. The question is, will the pebble be able to break the $10 million record setting round of the original pebble? Only time will tell, huh? You see what I did there, Dave? Isn't it about time you crossed a few items off your bucket list? Like for example, learning how to use Photoshop or how to code or maybe in how to create amazing pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. Well, if you head on over to lynda.com forward slash geekbeat, you can choose from one of over 100,000 videos from 3,337 courses and growing. What's better is that when you go to lynda.com forward slash geekbeat, you actually get a whole week of all you can stream access for free. So head on over there and fill up your brain. Finally, to wrap up today's episode, we're going handheld for a demonstration of the V-Bag camera stabilizer. Let's do this. Okay guys, this is a little bag. It's a mess. It's, 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 it's like an octopus-like thing. It just conforms itself everywhere. So right now you're looking at it, you're like, what is that? It's the V-bag. It's this plasticky thing, but it's actually filled with little beads and you pump the air out of it and it makes it stick to things. And here's why. I mean, it's easiest to just demonstrate. I've got a camera here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start recording, hit the old record button. And since I already kind of molded this thing to it, I can drop this little camera right in there and go for a ride with it.
Now what's awesome is you're going to notice that it really, it pretty securely mounts the camera. I have no concerns whatsoever about the camera sitting in there. And then when I'm done, I'll pull the camera out of its little position. We'll hit stop on the recorder. And to release this, I'm just going to twist this little knob and you hear the air escaping. Or going back in. Actually, yeah, the air is actually going back in because we had pumped it out. And what you get is this neat little bag that you can transport around. It actually snaps together. And I'm gonna tell you some other things about it that I really love here in a minute, but it's this- It's got sand or whatever in it, is it heavy? It's like little, it's like, you know those pillows that you, those pillows that have the little, this little seed things in them or something? I don't know, it's got either little, I don't know, I haven't looked inside. Like the but alfalfa husk? Yeah, it's like the little husk things or little beads of some sort. Now the whole thing weighs one pound. And here's how it works. Let's look at, I'm gonna set it down on the table over here. It's like, very, very simple. It's like a seal meal Yeah, it's very cool. So what you do is we can, we can pull the pump off. Now the pump doesn't normally stay on there. I left it on there just because it's nice to see how it can hang on there. But what you would do is you close the little valve screw it in there tight. Now we would crumple this thing all up. Let's pretend, let's pretend that we wanted to shoot something with this giant 1DX. That's a big camera. But we wanna, let's say, set it up to do a selfie and I don't have a tripod with me. Well, what we'll do is, we'll just kinda bunch this thing up like that. We'll shove our 1D all up in there like so, maybe get it just to the angle we want. We'll put the pump in here. Let's see, I'm gonna angle it upward just a tad like that. And then we evacuate the air. It only takes a few, pump, a few pumps and you'll see, you can start to see the texture on the, on the thing. And when it's pretty much pumped up, it just refuses. You see the little, little thing just doesn't even come out anymore. Now we can pull that out and we'll just plug it. And this thing is hard as a rock. Wow. Now, you can see it, the camera kind of wants to stick in there, but I can get the camera out. It's really hard. And then I can put the camera right back where it was so then I can stand here, shoot my little selfie. And then as soon as I'm done with that, we're ready to go somewhere else. And, and I mean, this is really hard. You can see it's still, you know, it's still pretty much holding its, its shape even after I beat it up. Then we just unscrew that, let the air back in it, and do whatever we wanna do. Now, here's the deal. You guys know I'm going to uh, Spain tomorrow actually, and I was gonna take my tripod with me because I'm gonna take the big camera hoping to get some good photos. But I'm thinking, why should I take the tripod when this thing weighs one pound and it doubles as a travel pillow? <laughs> Just blow a little air in here. <sighs> Screw it tight. <laughs> I bet you this is not something hey, that the guys at V-Bag ever really thought of. You could shrink wrap it to the back of your head. You could. You could mold it to the. You could and mold it to your neck. Okay. It won't fall off. But you know, you do that, and I mean, it's literally like a pillow. Okay. You tiny, can. Yeah. I mean, I could. You know, sit, use it in the. And this thing is durable. It's made out of really, really heavy-duty rubber. You can see the seams are really well made. It's a heavy-duty kind of plastic. I mean, it has to stand up to all kinds of pressure and the beating you're going to put it on the road, but I also like the fact that you can um, make it really small. You kind of shake it down, get all the little beads at one end or something, and then fold this thing over, and it's super compact for travel. And then, as I was showing you before, the way you can, you can keep the, the pump with it is you just put it in here and you, and you close that opening and what's interesting is this little tip is bigger than that than the uh, than the little wrapper here, so it won't actually slide through there. 
you know, you could get it folded and then pump all the air out and it'll take up even less space in your bag. You could, you could do that. So uh, I think this is an amazing little device for photographers. And as you've seen, it can be useful for a small camera or for a big camera. Now, these little suckers are gonna set you back $250. So that's not cheap, but that's about the same price as a good tripod only it's much smaller and you're gonna be able to use it in ways you can't use a tripod. For example, if I wanted to, I could actually climb up here and mount this thing around that pole with a camera on it, pump it up and you're done. Where else can you find anything with this kind of versatility that packs up and you can use it as a pillow and do whatever you want, one pound. So all you have to do Head on over to vbag.com. You can uh, check v. v as in Victor, vbag.com and uh, check out the Philip Bloom edition. Now they have other ones that are professional grade that are much more expensive. They're like four or $500. But this one, 250 and they'll ship them right to you. So very cool. Look for me in uh, Europe carrying this thing around. I'll take pictures from the road and we'll see uh, how it does. But I'm very, very impressed with it so far. So it's really cool. Okay, guys, that is it for today's episode of Geek Beat. Thumbs up on YouTube. Tweet me with any questions. And if you're gonna be in Spain, let me know. Maybe we'll get together. Turns out I might even head on over to Athens after I'm done in Barcelona. So I'll see you guys when I get back or from the road. Keep an eye out on my Twitters or my Google Pluses, and I'll see you later, bye.